No, we will. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, good. Um, let's see. First of all, good win um, against uh, Idaho State. I think there were a lot of good things coming out of that game that uh, we improved on. And um, just like I told the players and I've told the staff, it's um, college football is hard sport. It's a long year. you got to enjoy every win. Not where we want to be, not where we need to be, um, but we're going to keep improving and hopefully keep climbing that ladder a little bit um, as we um, uh, go through the season, go through the fall, we get a little bit better. It's a long fall, and um, our goal, obviously, will be to get better every week just like everybody else does, but that's it's a process, especially when you have a young team and you've got quite a few new starters. Um, and um, so a lot of bright spots. Um, first of all, ran the ball well. Um, found different ways to run the ball, different people. Um, it looks like to me that we may not have, um, it not, may not be a one-man show back there. Um, so spreading the wealth around between Chucky, JoJo, and, and three or four running backs. And um, if that's the case, um, so be it. That's fine with me too. Um, uh, I thought, thought our O-line played pretty well for the most part. Um, the tight ends played well uh, in the run game. Anytime you rush for, for that many yards, uh, you do some good stuff. You know, defensively, I thought we played very, very solid. Um, four turnovers, huge part of our plan to win. Um, I think they were responsible for, um, well, for sure they scored seven points and then responsible for another 12. Wish that would have been more. Um, but, uh, you know, I think Jalen Davis played well in the back end. Um, really good game. Both Vigil brothers, again, played well. Uh, Jordan Nielsen, B.J. Larson continue to lead the front line. Torrey Green stood out again. Um, had another good afternoon. So those are some of the bright spots. Um, six punts inside the 20. Jaron Bentrude uh, said it this morning on the radio. I think Todd Orlando is his biggest fan. Um, so he punted the ball well. So anyway, I think it was, um, it was a good win. Um, we got one. And now let's keep going and, and getting more. Um, good Wake Forest team coming in here. Um, as I look um, ahead, at them, I see a big, strong, athletic defense. Um, big guys up front. The two inside linebackers are very uh, talented, good players. And then the two corners have played a lot of football. The two corners have played since they're freshmen. Um, all my buddies on the East Coast that play these guys every year, they say the two corners are legit. They're good, good players. Um, I think their reputation kind of is growing um, out there on the East Coast. And so I know, and you know, you flip on two games and you see their play, their quality players. Um, you know, they got a true freshman at quarterback. Um, he's been very accurate and uh, going on his third career start. And um, so I know that that's, they've gone that direction, and I have too. And freshman quarterback, if they're ready to play, they're ready to play. And that kid's, kid's done well. And he's been very accurate, and I'm sure he's making good decisions for him. So anyway, I'll go ahead and, go ahead and open it up for, for any questions you guys may have. The biggest questions we had today was the receiver core with the injuries. Yeah. How does that look? Yeah, well, they're going to have opportunities to come up and step up. And I'd, I'm going to reiterate what I said the other night. I, They need to step up and play quality reps. Hunter Sharp's got to play well for us. Um, um, excuse me, Damon Patterson, Hayden Wickers, Ronald Butler. Um, all those guys are going to need to step up and play quality snaps for us. JoJo's playing at a high level right now, two straight weeks, uh, receiver and, and as a punt returner. I'm very happy with where he's at, and he's got to continue to, um, you know, continue to stay consistent is what he's got to do. Um, and so, so what is the Brandon? Uh, what was Brandon Swindle's decision? Um, the well, there's, st there's still an MRI to go. I hate that I don't have a for sure, for sure answer. I just hate doing that to kids before things are confirmed. I will again say it doesn't look good and confirm it. I, I don't think it's right to comment about an injury. I will tell you, uh, you know, doesn't look good. So. We're going to MRI, and I'll know a lot more this afternoon. Sorry, I don't have that MRI scheduled before this. But uh, what about Johnson? Then? Sean's going to be out for the year. Yeah, yeah, he's out for the year. It's it's kind of been confirmed. He's it's unfortunate for him. It's on again, off again, knee injuries, and and his kid did everything he could to continue to try to get back at play at a high level at Division One, and just not able to. So he's not going to try to come back next year. Like he's a senior. Yeah, no. So. Yeah. What, uh, I mean, you know, there were positives in a lot of things, but in the game, 
You gave up a lot of big plays in the in the back end. Are you worried yeah. about that, or is, well, is, you, you think, is that young guys, or what do you think? Both. Yeah, there were there were a couple of, that they hit against our ones that you're not you don't you don't ever want to have happen. Um, and um, you know the the two at the very end are are young guys and one communication and one signal bust. And a guy thinks he's got post help and the safety doesn't think he's given post help and all of a sudden there's a post for a touchdown. Credit to them for throwing it and catching it. Very good job. The right play was called at the right time and and um, that's how a lack of communication can get your tail beat. Now, at that point in the game it doesn't, but um, it didn't, but you want to know why, so I told you. So, yeah, you know what? Thought we shut down the run. They had to throw it. I told you the quarterback was good. He's a good player. They got good receivers. Um, that team's g- going to do a good job on offense. Well, that's exactly it looks like the MO of these guys. They haven't really been able to run the ball much in their first two games, but they they really threw it over 300 yards in this last game. Yeah, I think I think the Wolfer kids a g- is a good player. They got quality receivers um, and guys that can catch the ball in the backfield, and that's what they've done for two weeks so far. What, what is it about him? I mean. Stature-wise, he doesn't look like he's real big. Six one two oh five or listed, but it must, what, what is it about him that's good? If I was a betting man, I bet he's got a lot of moxie, and I bet he's smart. I bet he's a good leader. Maybe have some of those same qualities when we started a true freshman around here. Mm-hmm. So we've started two true freshmen since I've been here, and they both have those qualities. And I'll bet John has a lot of those qualities. You can play in Division One. It does. I don't care how old you are. You're 18, and your mom says that. That she's she's okay with you playing, and they sit, you know the compliance people and academic people say you're eligible, and we'll play him. And I, I bet that's the way they they feel about that kid. He gives them the best chance to win. He's probably the best quarterback in the program, you know. I and he's played solid in two games. So you kind of uh, you know uh, Tennessee prevailed over you guys. You whooped up on Idaho State. When are we going to see um, what kind of team Utah State is? Is it going to you know from from Wake Forest, Arkansas State? Well, I, you know, hopefully we, you know, get better as the year goes on. I mean, I think you're going to see, um, hopefully there's progress made each week. Um, I'm not in the prediction business, so I can't tell you. Is it, Are we going to, you know, you just mentioned the next two opponents. You know, I don't, I don't know. I'd like for those uh, to turn out in a positive manner. I mean, we're sure going to work that way. But I, you know, the, the team's identity will still continue to be formed as the year goes on. And, and, um, and you can't predict. Nobody sitting here last year predicted what was going to happen to us last year. Not anybody. I mean, me either, with all the adversity went through. Now we're out three guys. I mean, I got two outside linebackers out and a starting receiver out. Um, so that's, that's tough. It's not good. It's hard. We've got guys stepping up all over the place. Are we going to continue to step up and play and find a way to win games? This, you know, this business is about winning games and finding ways to win. And it's fun. It's exciting to, to see who's going to step up. And I think we'll all know. You'll know the identity of the team, you know, into, into October, into early November. And so it's anytime you, you lose as many starters as we did, um, you know, it, it, uh, we're not in midseason form right now. So still early. You acted like after the game you thought you'd go back and look at the film and not be as worried about the percentage of Chucky as we were looking yeah. at the stats. Were you after the game watching the film? No, but I'm just like anybody else. You want to see the kid go 22 out of 25. You know, um, He had six or seven throwaways, and there were more of those that were guys not being open than, than protection. Um, I, I think I charted three balls that I thought were – Two were off, and one was probably could have gone either way. So I don't think it was an accuracy issue with him. Um, and so there's always there's always reasons why certain numbers look 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 like they do. Um, oftentimes, um, a quarterback goes 22 out of 25, and you've got receivers making two or three catches they shouldn't. You know, and in contested catches, we missed a few contested catches. Had two drops. That was it. And only two. Not as many as um, you would maybe think. And and, the, and those two were early in the game. One would have been explosive play. So I think there's reasons why, you know. And uh, I don't think it was a big accuracy issue. But when he when he looks at his numbers, he's not going to be 
satisfied. Of well, it. I don't think any of us are really because I'm not satisfied with the reasons he had to throw the ball away. But he's an unselfish quarterback doing exactly what he's coached to do to give his team a chance um, in that series or that drive. And and you put up, you know, you put away selfish desires for the for the team, and that's what he does. So yeah, but any human nature would look at that and go, you know what, Dad Gummit, you know, I wish it was better. So do I. I wish it was better for the other reasons, not because of his inaccuracy. And just kind of play off of that question, how is Chucky feeling about his performance going into Wake Forest? I think he looks to get, you know, to play his best game of the year so far. He wants to do that. It's important to him. Um, and uh, he'll, he'll play well Saturday night. I don't think there's any question he wants to. Going up against a freshman quarterback, is there anything, a temptation maybe to do defensive-wise, kind of rattle them a little bit more than you would say a, you know, somebody who's a veteran? You know, um, that's, that's a good question, Leah. Um, Todd Todd can probably answer that a little bit better. I'm not sure if he'd – he's not going to reveal a game plan to you right now. But, you know, I I I don't think so, honestly, because if, if then you get away from who you are and what you do. Um, the most commonality is, oh, we're going to pressure this guy more. We're going to blitz him more. Uh, we do that anyway. So you're going to back off and play more coverage. Not sure about that either. So, How do they play? Are they a very aggressive defensively? Yeah, they, they are. Yeah, Mike Elko does a really nice job. You know, when, when he was at Bowling Green, they had one of the top defenses in the country the last couple years at Bowling Green. Um, you know, in fact, there were two mid-major defenses in the top ten of a lot of categories. It's the two that they're going to play this Saturday. And Mike does a really good job. He came with Coach Clausen from Bowling Green, and you know they're a, they're a four down front, and and they pressure, and he's smart about it, and they zone pressure, they man pressure, and he's aggressive. Um, he got coached by our D coordinator in college, by the way. So, he kind of a little bit of this cut from oh, the same cloth. <laughs> Todd coached him at Penn. At Penn. Yep. Oh, okay. You've had uh, a lot of players go into the NFL these last couple of years. Have um, has it, you know, especially with like Robert Turbin and Bobby Wagner on the Seahawks. Mm -hmm. Have they had an effect on the Aggies football culture? Well, I think it's um, for the players. Um, you see guys they go in and have success like, like those two guys have, and we all flip the TV on them and, on Thursday night and watched them play. And these guys represent Utah State football, but they represent our university. They represent, um, you know, a little bit about who we're about, just with their mindset and their work ethic and their character. And so I think as as players in the program see the success they have, I think it motivates them that hey, maybe if I have enough talent, I have a shot too in the NFL. And um, helps in recruiting, helps in visibility, your marketing, your branding, you know, your product and and the image that it's created out there. But those two guys represent us really, really well, and we're all happy for their success. Have you have uh, you had several players in the secondary go to the NFL? Mm -hmm. And it seems like there's been a couple breakdowns in the secondary. Has there been any communication with the, the those players that went in the NFL talking to their old teammates? Or I don't know. They they could be. If they can get them to come back and have a year eligibility, we'll take them back. Yeah. Is pass interference a more uh, something they've really brought out to call it was Saturday them. night. Well, yeah, they, have, is that supposed to be an emphasis? Do you know if the, the new rules or anything like that? Did they no. tell them to do that more? Or? No, I, I, not that I know of. It's I know more, the NFL more of an emphasis. Has made a big yeah. deal this year about their hands on and things like that, but the yeah. college game didn't really change much. Not, not really. No. Is that frustrating to see that many calls go down? I mean, even even I was watching and I watched a. a unsportsmanlike conduct call be called when Chucky e. Keaton made a touchdown that I even was like, ah. I mean, is that is that frustrating from the sideline? It it's frustrating from a head coach because to me they're uh, you know that's you don't you don't want those penalties. I I want aggressive penalties. I don't mind aggressive penalties. Um, we need to be cleaner with our hands. And when I say that, I mean in the defensive secondary. I mean on the offensive line. We need to play with cleaner hands. Um, and, and some better technique at some times. But you know what? We're going to be aggressive on both sides of the ball. Some of those are going to come. Uh, we have to limit those. Um, and, um, you know, that's about all I'll say on that. And what's it like to see a freshman in Jalen Davis coming out and playing like that? I mean, what, what now kind of do you expect from them coming in these games? 
Well, I think the biggest thing with Jalen is he's got to understand what's got him to this point so far and continue to do those things. And his care factor is real high. I mean, uh, you know, for an 18-year-old, he, he cares about being good and, and playing good. And he, I won't label him this yet, but he's starting to become a football junkie. Um, just a little extra things. Those are the things that he needs to continue to do. And, um, you know, I said I thought hey, he's played two back-to-back pretty good games. You know, not great, but pretty good. You know, he learns, needs to learn how to catch interceptions, stay outside the numbers. He has two touchdowns instead of one. But uh, I like his mindset. I just want his mindset to continue to stay in the right direction, and, and uh, he'll continue to play good ball for us back there. And kind of talking about JoJo Natson, uh-huh. continues to make these explosive plays. How, how does that affect your team as a whole when he goes out there? And well, when he did that punt return, I mean, it was the big momentum jumped right on the Aggie sideline and in the crowd and and everywhere, and he's an electrifying punt returner, and and uh, he's a weapon. You know, they obviously were trying to kick away from him, and and um, he got his hands on the ball and, and, and made a play. We needed it at that time. Uh, that was a big momentum swing for us going into halftime, and uh, any time he touches the ball in that kind of situation, he's got a chance to go to the house. This was a big special teams game other than the missed PAT. Uh, really, everything else worked out pretty well. Yeah, we had I mean, good like coverage. Long field goal yeah, stuff, we did. And it's a 54 yard field goal. You got to understand the percentages. And um, I still believe, you know, I see Jake Thompson do it every day in practice, and I still believe in him. Um, you know, we had good kickoff coverage, really good kickoff coverage. We continue to do that well. I, I mentioned earlier, Jaron had yeah, six, six uh, punts inside the 20. Um, I thought that was good. Our, our punt return team did, did a nice job. Hayden Wickers. Again, I'm gonna. I'll say it. Here we go. Two weeks in a row. Hayden Wickers has three catches, um, two of them off of rugby punts that are line drives that go for no yards because he fair catches it and it doesn't show up in the stats that Doug Doug and his staff put out. But they saved us. That's hidden yard yardage. That if those things hit, it's another fifteen to you know twenty twenty five yards of, of rolls. Had to be a, a special team thing you scouted. Very we did well to put a guy out. Yeah, we spot. did, and, and he executed. He did a really nice job. I was really proud of him. Coach, can you talk a little bit about the difference um, qualities your running backs bring? Especially if we're going to start seeing more you know, between Hall. Yeah, and Joe and Joe's the slasher. Catches the ball extremely well out of the backfield. He's got speed to hit a home run. Uh, Lawan has been very solid. Um, he's kind of a he and he and Rashad are both what I would call one cut guys uh, inside. Rashad's a little bit more of a power runner. Um, I wouldn't quite call him a power back yet, but I think he's, he runs with good vision. I think Lawan does a nice job catching the ball out of the well out of the backfield too, um, and um, and he's been a solid performer. Kennedy comes in and plays in some two back stuff. And very smart, knows multiple positions, knows a couple of the receiver positions, uh, catches the ball extremely well too. It, your offense really didn't start to kind of flow until you got that run game going. Is that indicative of maybe Chucky still kind of finding his feet under him? Or no, it's, it's just us good? trying to, you know, we're still coming up with our identity too. You know, I mean, shoot, we're throwing in new guys really, except JoJo. Um, we, got, we got new tight ends for the most part. You know, there's not a 265-pound inline tight end DJ Tialavea like there was at the beginning of last year and the two years before that. So we're we're a little different, you know, and we're still trying to 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 um, exactly hone in on exactly what you know we're best at um, because we all want to do what we're best at too. So um, we'll see. Maybe see more of the run game. In the yeah, we have to run the ball. You have to run the ball to win. Um, I think. Um, that's uh, that's been a little bit of our mo around here, and I think it. But I think it's true in football in general. You find the ways to run the football and be successful doing that. It opens up uh, the passing game, your play action game. Um, and how does it feel? Even though, like you mentioned multiple times, you guys are a new team. You're kind of mm-hmm. learning yourself. How does it feel to have the fans still come out there on a Saturday night? And you know they're going to be there. This yeah. Night. Yeah. I think it's 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 huge for us. Um, we want to establish a winning culture. We want to establish a winning program. Uh, that's the same reason I told our staff and our players, hey, enjoy the win and continue to enjoy it and then go back to work on Monday, and, and that's what we're going to do. Um, but uh, very appreciative of the fans, you know, the herd, the student body. I mean, they were loud. Uh, they were into it. 
Um, we need another big crowd. You know, the wide out this Saturday night. Um, I think we're the only Division One game in the state. I know somebody will correct me if I'm wrong right now. Is that right? Exactly. We need the whole state coming. And you wear whatever color you want to wear, just come cheer on the Aggies. We need to fill that thing up. Can you talk just about your perception maybe of just the, the what you're seeing in college football in general? There's a lot of talk that, that you know the Big Ten might be down, ACC might be up. Any thoughts on that at all? I, what you're seeing so far? Have you been I, out of your office yet? I, I have. I don't <laughs> sleep in there. Um, but I, honestly, I haven't seen very many games. Yeah. I saw a little bit of the Nebraska McNeese game at the end, bef- you know, in between our, our meals. Um, I see the Friday night games and the Thursday night games, but I don't know if I, it's, it's a broad enough, um, I got a broad enough, um, whatever, vision of, of what's going on around the country. I've, I've seen very little. Um, I hate that. Sorry, I can't answer that. I, I, I want to answer your question better for you, but I don't, you know. For our division, the Boise beat in Colorado State sets up the interesting things all right, right away, you know, obviously. Sets it up for you. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't do anything for me. We're going to have to play both of them. We're going to have to play both of them on the road. Um, you know, those will be two really tough games, you know. I, didn't, I saw some at the very end of that game. That's about it, though. Are you considering using any um, receivers that you're maybe hoping to redshirt just because of the injuries? Not yet. So it's uh, September and there's no youth on the schedule. How disappointed are you that you're not going to be playing in the University of Utah? Our schedule's hard enough right now. Um, we'll, I'll play whoever's on that schedule. We'll, we'll show up each and every week, but you know that's um, they're not on the schedule for for a few years. Um, I love that rivalry. I played in it. I've coached in it. Um, I've coached against Utah at, at other universities, um, although not real successful. Um, it's a tremendous rivalry um, for us. Um, great one to play in. Great one to coach in. Um, but they're not on the schedule, and and um, you know I I, don't, I can't really comment because they're not really on the schedule. So I'm not, I'm not saying I'm disappointed, and I'm not saying I'm happy. Um, but they're they're a they're a good program and their our schedule's hard enough right now. Did you see a boost in recruiting when you beat Utah a couple years ago, and then you also had just such a great game last year? Yeah, um, I, I maybe perception wise, I'm not sure you get it numbers or um, wise. I mean, I think we we are in more homes. I think we are in more recruits' minds than we have been. Um, and I think that that gets better. So um, I think in this case, uh, um, the perception in their minds that Utah State's a program that's on the rise and that we can play with people and beat people at times and in that, that are really solid big programs and, and recruits' minds and parents' minds, which is where it counts just as equal, um, I think will continue to be an option for those guys. Now, do we fit what they're looking for? as far as opportunity to play the league, the school, the environment, and all that. Because, you know, um, if they fit, we really want them. And, um, but when you ask specifically did it boost recruiting, I don't know, but I know it did perception-wise. I know when you play well on national television, um, people understand the logo and, and uh, what your program's about. Your question earlier about the NFL guys, that helps. That all matters. All the draft picks that we've had in the last few years, how well those kids are playing, the fact that we've graduated all the kids we have 100% in the last six years, I mean, that matters in a lot of people's minds. We're winning games. Um, we want to continue to create that winning culture. I was just saying to, to Bailey about um, whether it's with the fans, it's with the recruits, it's everything around it. We're not perfect. Never act like we are. Um, but I think it's a um, – it's a um, I, it's an honor for me to coach in and it. For you personally, I, I sat down with Kyle Whittingham a couple of weeks ago, and after the interview, he asked me when I went to school, and I said, oh, I'm an Aggie. And he said, oh, I, I like that Matt Wells. I like what he's doing with that program. For you personally, how are you feeling this season? Um, we just need to win this week. <laughs> I mean, I get so short-sighted in, in, in season, and it's – What's the routine on Monday? What's the routine on Tuesday? Um, and then be 1-0. and Find a way to win this week. Um, but big picture-wise, um, I'm, I'm a very lucky guy. I mean, I get to coach at you know, my alma mater and, 
it's a uh, it's a great place. It's a great place because we got great kids. We got we got good players. Um, we have kids that are um, passionate about doing things right about Aggie football, the winning culture. Sometimes too passionate, where it's not good enough. You don't score enough points. You don't hold them to you know. That's where I go back and I say, man, we're creating a winning program and a winning culture, and enjoy the wins. It's too hard. It's too long of a season, um, off season, all that, man. Enjoy the ride and enjoy the process. And and I'm trying to do that too. It's hard as a as a head coach because you're it's, you're so detailed and and you're going from thing to thing to thing. But man, I'm a lucky guy. Do you like if you guys are still trying to find this identity and, and building towards mm-hmm. the season? How it lays out. I mean, you don't have a conference game till fairly oh. fairly late. Yeah. Pretty nice to kind of feel like you can get the things rolling by then. Yeah, if all you guys and and my bosses and everybody else counted as preseason, that'd be good. <laughs> it doesn't. It goes on the official record. <laughs> we better figure it out today. <laughs> uh, if you're going to be running a little bit more, um, how do you like how the offensive line is developing? And it's a work in progress. I, I like those kids care, man. They care so much about being good. Um, the legacy that is in front of them is tremendous. I mean, the guys that just left out of here with over 100 career starts and the, the things that that line did before them, it's a, it leaves a um, big, long, tall shadow in that room. And But I'm going to tell you, those the four new ones, and then, of course, Kevin, um, I like them. I like them because they care. They got a lot of grit and toughness. They're not perfect, but uh, you know they spend time in that room, and they're going to keep getting better. You didn't change the five much when you played the first team this game, like you did. At well, you know, Austin came in and played play some. Uh, Albrecht and and Tyshawn has played. Play yeah, okay. yeah. I and trying to notice that, and I didn't. And, um, and those guys are kind of the next two in right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Can play multiple positions. As, uh, it seems like Kevin's really, um, you know, really vocal with the team. Mm-hmm. Um, what has his been, words been for his own line? Oh, I think. You know, you want them to play consistent. You want them to, to uh, um, you know, they they want to dominate in the run game. And then they always say, keep the chief clean, and I ain't the chief. That's number 16. So they want to keep him protected and, and run the football. So that's their big thing. And Kevin does a good job of getting them, getting them on the same page, getting them motivated. And he's a vocal leader, not just for the offensive line, but for the whole offense and our team as a whole. Tremendous leader. Are you satisfied with the – were they able to take a step forward in, in that work in progress? Did you think in that second quarter? The the O line. O line. Yeah, I think they've I think they've grown since you know I thought I thought they got better as the game went on to, you know at Tennessee, and I thought they got a little bit better this week as the game went on. Um, you know, go check the career starts out for those guys. Not very many. You know, take Kevin Wimpy out of the mix, and there's not very many career starts in the next four. Um, and every one of their jobs. And their assignments depend on the guy right next to him. Um, it's not it's not a receiver doing my one thing or a linebacker just doing my gap or my one thing. I mean, so much of what they do relies on the next guy. And I I, I like the progress. Where we want to be, no. Where we need to be, no. We're, we're we're going, and we have the right intentions. I'll tell you that, and that's half the battle. How is Hunter Sharp? I'm assuming that he may be the. The next man up yeah, it needs to. Hunter's an electrifying kid. Um, you know, didn't I don't know, didn't really quite have the opportunities this game for whatever reasons. Um, but uh, needs to needs to step up, play quality reps, um, and uh, we got to we got to do a good job of putting him in those positions. He has to do a good job of um, you know making contested catches and getting himself open and being a valuable part of this offense now. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah.